It's a clear, beautiful day in Los Angeles, and while it's a brisk 50 degrees, it feels good to be out in the fresh air, away from the city, and out in nature, where I have a chance to slow down, listen to my thoughts and emotions, and remember what it's like to be human again. Away from politics, TV, and movies, and for once, looking down on Hollywood, enjoying an external perspective with a clear mind. Of course, in our modern world, what it means to be human seems to be changing, as the line between technology and genetics has been blurred, and what was once considered sci-fi entertainment is being brought into a new transhumanist reality, such as with Neuralink, an ultra-high bandwidth brain-machine interface that connects humans and computers and genetic modifications to the human genome itself, from DNA modifications to designer babies. Gene editing, or genome engineering, is a type of genetic engineering in which DNA is inserted, deleted, modified, or replaced in a genome of a living organism. Unlike early genetic engineering techniques that randomly inserts genetic material into a host genome Genome editing targets the insertions to the site-specific locations. The most common method of gene editing is called CRISPR, or Clustered, Regularly, Interspaced, Short, Palindromic Repeats. It's a technology that makes use of an enzyme derived from bacteria that can cut through DNA strands at a specific location creating an opening where a new segment can be fused in place. The method is cheap, easy to deploy, and has made the possibility of genetically modified human babies in an in vitro fertilization center a reality. Using genome editing on human embryos is currently outlawed in France, Germany, Britain, and as of this week, Japan. When Chinese researchers first edited the genes of a human embryo in a lab dish in 2015, it sparked global outcry and pleas from scientists not to make a baby using the technology. According to Chinese medical documents posted online earlier this year, a team at the Southern University of Science and Technology in China has been recruiting couples in an effort to do just that create the first gene-edited babies with the stated goal of eliminating a gene called CCR5 in hopes of rendering the offspring resistant to HIV, smallpox, and cholera. The clinical trial documents describe a study in which CRISPR is deployed to modify human embryos before they are transferred into women's uteruses, but fell short of saying whether or not the undertaking had resulted in a live birth so it was not known if those pregnancies were terminated, carried to term, or are ongoing. That said, the Associated Press and other agencies have now reported that one couple in the trial did in fact give birth to twin girls. A line has been crossed that should not have been crossed. It's very disturbing. It's inappropriate. Oh, this is huge. He says he genetically edited human embryos, not just for research, but for implantation, leading to the world's first births of genetically altered humans, baby girls born in China from embryos designed to be resistant to HIV. Some scientists continue to speak out against the prospect of producing engineered embryos 
that could lead to what is being called designer babies. The concern in parents choosing eye color, hair color, or gender is largely ethical, but also may be difficult to achieve beyond that, as desirable traits such as athleticism, intelligence, and beauty are complicated, and some biologists feel they couldn't produce designer babies like that even if they wanted to. That said, a biochemist in Scotland published another paper recently in the journal Bioethics stating that gene editing has made great advancements and now presents such low risks that it could be effectively used in human embryos. Other scientists have proposed using the technology to bring back extinct animals, such as woolly mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, or other prehistoric creatures. Some have even proposed using DNA modification to achieve age reversal, a real-life genetic fountain of youth. We've been modifying genes, not by gene editing, but by selective breeding from the beginning. How else can you turn a wolf into a chihuahua, into a lap poodle? That's what we've been doing. We just know how to do it better today than ever before, faster than ever before. What I find interesting about CRISPR and its applications is how widespread it can become. It doesn't require large labs or large sums of money. So in a sense it democratizes gene editing. And I have no idea where that will go. Uh, are we wise enough to tame ourselves in the presence of this awesome power? that previously was only in the hands of nature. Only in the hands of nature over millennia, and in some cases millions of years. And now you can do it over a weekend with a kit, modifying organisms. Biology is still being transformed by CRISPR technologies. I don't know where it's going to land, but I know there's a huge upside for the good that it could bring us all. And let's just hope our culture, scientists, our institutions are wise enough to get us there. Ectolife is a concept that offers parents the ability to produce customized babies with the help of artificial wombs in what could be effectively called baby farms. While the idea is being marketed as a way for parents to not only eradicate genetic diseases from their bloodline, but they'd also be able to choose their baby's level of intelligence, height, hair and eye color, physical strength, and even skin tone. A conceptual video was recently released which illustrates what one of these artificial womb facilities would theoretically look like. And while it's targeted towards giving parents more control, it's eerily reminiscent of a scene from the movie Matrix where rows of babies are grown inside of pods, not for parents, but for some sort of AI or state-run facility. The concept is the brainchild of a Berlin-based molecular biologist. So let's take a look. Introducing Ectolife, the world's first artificial womb facility, powered entirely by renewable energy. Ectolife is designed to help countries that are suffering from severe population decline, including Japan, Bulgaria, South Korea, and many others. The facility features 75 highly equipped labs. Each state-of-the-art lab can accommodate up to 400 growth pods or artificial wombs. Every pod is designed to replicate the exact conditions that exist inside the mother's uterus. A single building can incubate up to 30,000 lab-grown babies per year. Every growth pod features sensors that can monitor your baby's vital signs, including heartbeat, temperature, blood pressure, breathing rate, and oxygen saturation. The artificial intelligence-based system also monitors the physical features of your baby and reports any potential genetic abnormalities. The pod 
robots are equipped with a screen that displays real-time data on the developmental progress of your baby. The app also provides you with a high-resolution live view of your baby's development. A special section in the app allows you to watch a time-lapse of your baby's growth and share it directly with your loved ones. Because babies can recognize language and learn new words while still in the womb, EctoLife Growth Pods feature internal speakers that play a wide range of words and music to your baby. Through the app, you can choose the playlist that your baby listens to. You can also directly sing to your baby and make them familiar with your voice before birth. Our goal is to provide you with an intelligent offspring that truly reflects your smart choices. Each group of pods is connected to two central bioreactors. The first bioreactor contains nutrients and oxygen, which are supplied to your baby through an artificial umbilical cord. This bioreactor also contains a liquid solution that serves as the ambiotic fluid that surrounds babies in the mother's uterus. It's rich of vital hormones, growth factors, and antibodies that sustain your baby's growth and development. Thanks to a system controlled by artificial intelligence, each baby receives custom nutrients tailored to their needs. The second bioreactor is designed to eliminate any waste products produced by the babies. The artificial umbilical cord helps the babies to release their waste products into the second bioreactor. With the help of a delicate layer of engineered enzymes, the second bioreactor can then recycle waste products and turn them back into useful nutrients. This way, the facility ensures a steady and sustainable supply of fresh nutrients to your baby. With EctoLife, miscarriage and low sperm count are a thing of the past. Prior to placing the fertilized embryo of your baby inside the growth pod, in vitro fertilization is used to create and select the most viable and genetically superior embryo, giving your baby a chance to develop without any biological hurdles. And if you want your baby to stand out and have a brighter future, our Elite Package offers you the opportunity to genetically engineer the embryo before implanting it into the artificial womb. Thanks to CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing tool, you can edit any trait of your baby through a wide range of over 300 genes. By genetically engineering a set of genes, the Elite Package allows you to customize your baby's eye color, hair color, skin tone, physical strength, height, and level of intelligence. It also allows you to fix any inherited genetic diseases that are part of your family history so that your baby and their offspring will live a healthy, comfortable life free of genetic diseases. Say goodbye to the pain of childbirth and birth-related muscle contractions. EctoLife provides you a safe, pain-free alternative that helps you deliver your baby without stress. The delivery process is smooth, convenient, and can be done with just a push of a button. After discharging the amniotic fluid from the artificial womb, you will be able to easily remove your baby from the growth pod. Everything is perfectly designed so you and your partner can enjoy the delivery process. To ensure full transparency, our post-delivery free DNA paternity test helps you confirm the genetic identity of your baby so you can return home knowing that your baby is genetically yours. The highly advanced pods operate with minimal energy needs, making it easy for your baby to make it to full term without any complications. And for those who want a more convenient solution, EctoLife is made accessible so your life can be easier. Thanks to our miniaturized bioreactors and long-lasting batteries, you can use EctoLife growth pods at the comfort of your home, allowing you to incubate your baby in your building without the need to visit our factory. By owning your special growth pod, you will have the ability to build a happy family, one baby at a time, away from any birth complications. Life.
Life. Reinventing evolution. Transhumanism advocates the use of current and emerging technologies such as genetic engineering, artificial intelligence, and nanotechnology to augment human capabilities, enhance longevity, and improve cognition. And while it's promoted as a way of empowering parents, giving them more freedom and choice over their offspring, critics claim that cloning technologies eventually make parenting obsolete, theoretically giving the state or a corporation total ownership over created beings, a cyborg civilization owned and controlled by a central governing power, essentially turning humanity into an eternal slave race. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. My published work is available on Amazon and through all other major book outlets. If you'd like to support my work, you can do that through patreon.com. There should be a link in the description. Please subscribe for future updates. Leave your thoughts below. Have a wonderful weekend, and I hope to see you again soon.